All right, it's a Tuesday, a few days removed from the last session you saw at Thunder Valley. Back here at the home court property of Lucky Chances. Happy that I no longer need to drive either an hour to Grayton or over two hours to Thunder Valley and can just drive roughly 20 to 30 minutes to get to this property. And yeah, getting this session started pretty late. It's 10 o'clock right now, not sure how long I'm gonna play. I called in and they said there were two tables running, so let's see if I can try to run it up. Starting things off seven-handed, under the gun limps, hijack raises to $25. I'm on the button with ace seven of spades and I make the call, big blind and under the gun call as well. We go four ways to a flop of jack nine deuce with two spades, so I flop the nut flush draw. Big blind checks, under the gun bets $25. Hijack calls, I just decide to flatten in position and big blind calls as well. Turn comes a three of spades, so I make the nuts. The players check to me and I decide to fire a little over half pot, $125. Big blind folds and the other two players follow suit. So scoop an easy one to kick off the session. Next hand, continuing with seven handed, I make a light open to $20 from under the gun with four or five of diamonds and I get calls from the cutoff and big blind. Three ways to a flop of seven, four, three with two spades. So I flop middle pair, gut shot and backdoor diamonds. Big line checks, I check, cutoff fits $30, and his hands are shaking a bit, which typically indicates a strong holding. Big line calls, and with middle pair and some drawing possibilities, I decide to make the call. Turn comes a seven of diamonds, so I pick up the backdoor flush draw. Checks again to the cutoff, who bets $50 this time with $500 back. Big line calls once again, and I decide to peel once more and try to realize on the river, which comes a jack of clubs, so it bricks off. Big line and I check it once more, Cut off jams for $500 effective. Big blind tank folds, and I let this one go as well. Next hand, hijack limps. I'm in the cutoff with 7 8 suited and raise it to $25, and I get two callers the small blind and hijack. Three ways to a flop of king 10 deuce rainbow. So I flop some hopeful backdoor possibilities, but when both players check to me, I opt to range bet $50. And fortunately, I face zero resistance as both players fold. All right, next one here, we're playing fully eight-handed. Cut off limps. I'm on the button with pocket aces, and I raise it to $25, and I get calls from the big blind and cutoff. Three ways to a flop of 6-5-4 rainbow. Both players check, and it's not an ideal flop for aces. You can play a mixed strategy of checking or betting. I opt for the former. And we go to a turn of a king of diamonds. Checks to me once more, and this time I go for value, $50. Big blind calls and cutoff folds. River comes a jack of hearts, so should be a brick. And when big blind checks, I try to eke out some value for $100. And after some deliberation, she does not oblige and folds her hand, and I scoop this one. Next hand is perhaps the hand of the night. Middle position limps. I'm in the low jack with ace queen offsuit and I raise it to $25 and I get calls from the button, big blind, and middle position. Four ways to a flop of king six three rainbow. Action checks to me and I have to range bet once more, this time for a small amount of $35 since it's a pretty dry board. Only the button calls. Heads up to a flop of a jack of hearts. I opt to begin polarizing here and bet $140. He's in the tank and ultimately makes the call with roughly $500 back. River comes a four of diamonds, so all in all a clean run out to keep getting after it as I'm uncapped and can have all of the strong hands. I jam for his $500 effective and he snap calls. And before I can show, he tables 5-7 offsuit for the river nuts. So a rough one here, but I get good info about this player and his willingness to gamble after seeing this one go down. 
money loss, but helpful information gained. I did later learn that he plays pretty big in some other cash games. I think he mentioned playing 25, 50 and above. So it makes sense why he's calling a little bit looser in this game, but it's probably just monopoly money for him. A couple quick ones following this hand. I took down a hand with pocket tens on an ace high board for a $40 pot. And then another quick one was when I had ace queen off on an ace queen high board for a $60 pot. Next hand I raise it to $20 from the hijack with ace king off suit and I get calls from the cutoff, button, and small blind. Four ways to a flop of jack 10 five with two clubs. Big blind checks, I bet $30, cutoff folds, button, and small blind call. Turn brings another jack, and this time action checks through. The river comes a king of hearts. Big blind checks, and I decide to go for value, $100. Button calls, big blind folds, and before I can table my hand, button shows ace queen off suit for a river Broadway to take it down. Didn't see this one coming, and I end up getting value owned. Next hand, under the gun raises to $20. I call from the hijack with ace nine of diamonds, button, and small blind call as well. Four ways to a flop of ace seven six with two spades. And when action checks to me, I bet $50, button folds, small blind calls, and under the gun folds. Heads up to a turn of a queen of diamonds. It's a good blank card. And when he checks to me, I decide to fire $150 for a mix of denial and value. And he pretty quickly folds, so happy to take this one down after being card dead for about an hour and a half. Last hand to run through, I raise it to $20 from under the gun with ace jack off suit, and I get three callers, the middle position, high jack, and big blind. Four ways to a flop of queen jack 10 with two diamonds. When big blind checks, I offer a bet of $40 to stay uncapped and clear up some equity. Only the middle position player calls as high jack and big blind fold. Heads up to a turn of a three of spades. The player in middle position is pretty tight and value heavy. So I think he's gonna be more weighted towards a hand such as king queen, but it doesn't mean that he can't have a flush draw. That said, I think I can put all those holdings in a tough spot through more aggression. So I bet $175. He tanks for a while and ultimately decides to let it go. So a good result here. Not exactly sure what he had, but given that he was tanking, I think the best case scenario for me was that the equities were probably pretty close. So. Happy to just end this hand on 4th Street. All right, so that wraps it up for the notable hands. It's roughly 3 a.m. right now. So played till roughly 2.30ish, uh, four hour session. Got in the game for $1,800, out for 947. Book back-to-back -back losses on the vlog. Uh, mine is 853 on this one. Just couldn't get anything going after that triple barrel that didn't work out when the player river the straight and just found myself on the wrong end of not having the best hand and then followed by being card dead for quite a period and I tried to stick with it. The game wasn't that great and sometimes you kind of just get the feeling that you're not going to be able to make that comeback. So yeah, these early AM sessions don't seem to be working out these last couple outings. Might try to change it up to a different schedule. Hopefully that will help things and avoid what we all don't want when we play poker, which is a downswing and try to bounce back on the next one. So as always, thanks for the support and I'll see you all on the next one.